Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some new discoveries in regards to our own sun, or I guess more specifically, in regards to the effects our sun creates, as it creates various solar winds that then go around the solar system, forming this unusual region that we refer to as a heliosphere, a kind of a protective shell that seems to shield the entire solar system from a lot of various types of radiation coming from the outside while at the same time also creating a lot of other effects we're still trying to learn about. Something that also defines the solar system itself. Basically, once you leave the heliosphere, you're considered to be in the interstellar space, and that's where both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes currently are located. And speaking of the probes, you might have heard that Voyager 1 was experiencing a few problems a few months ago. It was sending unusual glitches back to planet Earth, and the scientists were worried that maybe the mission was over. By the way, this link that you can find in the description shows you a lot of different statistics about the missions and basically explains everything that they've been doing, all of the instruments that they have on board, shows you the approximate location of both probes compared to the rest of the solar system, and reminds you that they've been active for over 45 years. According to my channel statistics, that's much older than most of my viewers, including myself. But not so long ago, the scientists behind this mission were able to finally solve the glitch. Turns out some of the telemetry data was unfortunately sent to the broken computer. For some reason there was a malfunction inside the probe, and it was actually relaying a lot of the data to the computer that was no longer working. But by switching the modules, the scientists think that now it's back to functioning normally and back to sending regular data, which the scientists are hoping is going to be doing for at least 5 more years, making this the longest and the most impressive mission NASA has ever launched. Here's actually the video of the original launch of both of the missions back in 1977. But one of the more impressive discoveries in the last 10 years was made by both probes when they officially left the solar system, or when they essentially crossed the termination shock, passed the helio sheath, and enter the region that we refer to as the interstellar space. Basically the space that we find right here in between various stars. Now this particular region we still don't really understand very well, but we know that there's definitely a lot more radiation there, there's also a lot more gas, but because of the pressure from the solar radiation from the solar wind, a lot of this is expelled as the sun travels around the galaxy, which then creates the bow shock you see right there. There's a really good way of visualizing this by basically looking at the tap and the effects it creates on the sink. This right here is the sun, we have the flow coming from the sun which is the solar winds, this is the termination shock, and then there's all of this really unusual activity where the actual flow slows down, which tends to create a lot of turbulence and a lot of unusual bubbling and wave-like effects. And this is actually a really good model for what the scientists recently discovered. The actual effects that we see in the sink, for example, seem to parallel what really happens out there in the interstellar space as well. But 10 years ago, when Voyager 1 probe was officially crossing this particular region, not a lot was known about it, and the scientists actually had no idea what happens around the sun, mostly basing all of their knowledge on various simulations and various mathematical models. However, Voyager 1 reached the termination shock and the helio sheath in 2004, and then crossed the heliopause in 2012, at a distance of approximately 122 astronomical units away from the Sun. Whereas the Voyager 2 did the same a few years later, entering the termination shock in 2007 and leaving the helio sheath in 2015. But this was much closer, at 109 astronomical units, which to the scientists already suggested that there is definitely something going on with the shape of the heliosphere and that it's unlikely to be perfectly spherical like the scientists previously imagined. On top of this, in the last few years they've discovered a lot of other things, including the unusually hot hydrogen wall that we've discussed in one of the older videos, basically the firewall that you kind of see right here, but more importantly, discovering that, for some reason, the helio sheath has actually changed in size since the original passage of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And not by a little bit, by like several astronomical units, or basically several times the distance of the Sun to planet Earth. For example, for Voyager 1, it was at 122 AU before, but 4 years later, it was at least 9 AU larger. That's more than the distance of the Sun to planet Saturn. For Voyager 2, things were even more complicated. 
it could have been anywhere from 103 astronomical units to 119 astronomical units, with a lot of parts of the heliosheath either being somewhat broken, or potentially having weird holes in them, or basically not being straight or not being spherical at all. But then, a few years ago, the scientists using a different type of a probe, actually a completely different mission, were able to discover something else using a very brilliant technique. They were using NASA's mission known as IBEX, Interstellar Boundary Explorer, a mission that's been active for over a decade now, and that essentially is responsible for measuring the total pressure coming from the solar wind, but also is able to measure something entirely different. It's able to measure the particles that are reflected from the heliosheath and tend to return back into the inner solar system, thus allowing this mission to create a kind of a map that's able to detect the high energy particles reflected from the heliosheath as they're trying to leave the solar system, which is kind of equivalent to what I guess bats do. It's a type of a echolocation. We have solar wind and solar particles going out, moving across the solar system, and then returning back into the inner solar system, where they're captured by this probe, and allow it to then create a kind of a three-dimensional map. And there was a major breakthrough for this probe back in 2014, when the sun increased its solar activity, or the pressure from the solar wind, by approximately 50%. And because of this increase, it allowed the scientists to produce an extremely accurate map of most of the heliosphere surrounding the solar system, and it's actually not spherical at all. It seems to be something like this, a kind of a croissant shape, which we've discussed in one of the older videos from about two years ago. This is when this official discovery was made because of all of the data collected over the years. So back then this was the official shape of the solar system, which the scientists back then compared to the other star systems we've observed from other regions, like this one right here, or this one right here. So this is maybe what the solar system looks like from a distance. But none of this explains the differences between the measurements from Voyager probes and the differences from Ibex in terms of the actual size of the heliosphere. Why exactly did it change in size anywhere from 9 to 15 AU in certain locations of the solar system? And more importantly, was there something else going on here? The answer is yes, and this new study kind of gives us a bit of a clue here. It's not entirely clear yet what exactly is happening, but the scientists now believe that there's definitely something going on here that makes the shape of the termination shock and the heliosphere change over time, just like the bubbles and the ripples you would see here. In other words, there seems to be always an increase or a decrease in pressure coming from the sun, which create these unusual ripples and unusual changes in the heliopause with various pressure waves creating all kinds of wavy and bubbly activity on the surface with some of these ripples very likely being huge in size, we're talking about astronomical unit size. I guess another way of imagining this is as a kind of a humongous tsunami-like wave that travels on the surface of this, and is basically formed by the pressure coming from the solar wind, making the surface of the heliosphere very likely appear something like this, or possibly even more dramatic than this. Or of course suggesting that not only is this not spherical, but is shaped sort of like this, but this particular shape is definitely not constant and is definitely constantly changing, rippling around, moving around, and producing all sorts of effects as well. And I mean, this is maybe not the best example I can give you, but it really looks like some kind of a jellyfish. Something that's wriggling around, something that's really constantly moving, and something that's producing pressure and waves on the surface because of various changes coming from within the sun and because of changes in the solar pressure and the solar wind. At least that's what we think is happening. In reality, all this is a completely new discovery, with these massive ripples being an even bigger surprise, and so nobody really knows what's happening here, and we're probably not going to know more until at least 2025, because NASA is launching another really important mission to study all of this and to try to understand what our sun is doing and how it's affecting the rest of the solar system. A mission known as IMAP whose main purpose is going to extend on what IBEX has been doing and to try to use very similar effects of echolocation, or basically reflecting the solar wind as it comes back from the edge of the solar system, to try to map all of this even better, and to try to answer these unusual questions about these strange wrinkly bubbles, this very unusual croissant shape, and to of course finally figure out exactly what our solar system looks like from the outside. Is it like this? Or is it something entirely different that we can't even imagine yet? 
At the moment though, these are definitely super exciting discoveries, mostly because we actually are learning about the solar system as we've never imagined it to be. For the longest time, we always thought it was just a spherical, a kind of a comet-like shape, basically something like this. But it's definitely not. And the fact that it's not this makes this a pretty big mystery. And if it actually does look like this, the question is why? Does our sun also have these unusual polar emissions like you see in this image? Are there any other emissions that we still don't know about? And do these emissions have any effect on planet Earth? All of this is definitely going to be answered by this mission in 2025, but until then, I guess we can only rely on some of the older data coming from Voyager probes and coming from the now pretty old IBEX mission as well. But I guess until we learn something else or until new discoveries, well that's pretty much it. Our solar system, the entire solar system, seems to be kind of wrinkly, kind of weirdly shaped, and also seems to always change in size by quite a dramatic margin, up to about 10% within just a single year. Why though, nobody knows. We'll learn about this in some of the future videos. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.